Hey everybody, Don and Ryan here from Roll for Initiative with another Learn to Play brought to you by our friends at the Bearded Bird Brewing Company. So we have two games that we will be teaching you today. First is going to be Gloom from Atlas Games and then we will be teaching you Peasant Buffet from Wargy Studios. So Gloom is a card game, uh, you play various families, and the ultimate point of Gloom is to have the most miserable family and then have them die. Uh, so you want to have negative points in this game, and you play uh, cards onto the various characters, whether they're your own characters or other players' characters. You can play especially cards that negate some of that negative points or give them positive points. And a major factor of Gloom is the storytelling aspect. So each of the cards have kind of an event that happens, and so you weave that together into the story of this character. And you'll see that in our gameplay. Okay, so the setup for this is pretty simple. Each player will select a family, which is five characters of the same color and have the same symbol. Each player will draw five cards, and then we start the game. Turn order is simple. You get to choose to pass, play, or discard up to two cards, then draw your hand back up. Untimely deaths can only be played on a first play, so the first card that you play. You can play cards on your characters or on other player characters. There are four different card types in Gloom. Character cards, each of these has a portrait on the front and a skull on the back. These cards have no points, but they are the basis on which the, all the rest of the cards are played. The next kind of card are modifier cards. These are played onto characters. They have spots for up to three peso points. Some modifier cards also have story icons. These story icons have no effect on their own, but may interact with other cards. Modifier cards also may have special effects. This could be an immediate effect that is triggered when played, or it is a continuous special effect that works as long as that card's text is visible. These effects always apply to the person who controls the character to which the modifier card is attached, not the person who played the modifier. Third kind of cards are event cards. Uh, these have red, a red text plate, and they are played from your hand and are immediately discarded. They have an immediate effect which is triggered when played, and the final kind of card are untimely death cards. These can be played on any character as long as it has a current self worth less th than zero. This is one rule that we kind of forgot in the playthrough, so uh, ignore that part when you're watching our playthrough. When played on a character, turn that character card over to the deceased side, the skull side, and place the death card on top of the stack. Only visible pathos points count towards a character's self worth. The game ends as soon as an entire family is eliminated. Each pay player then totals the visible pathos points on each of their own dead characters. Add each character's points together to get the total family value. The player with the lowest family value wins. So in this game, you want negative cards. Things have been so rough for Thumbelisa, she just wanted to run away and start a whole new life with a new chance to begin. That's exactly what she did. And while he was blessed by the bishop and met a very nice lady that he thought he was going to wed and be happy with, uh, on the wedding day, she left him standing at the altar. So, unfortunate for Butterfield, the manatee was infected with measles and he succumbed to the disease and passed away. Ah, oh, that's so sad for him. <laughs> I'm going to play To Be or Not To Be with one untimely death from a dead character to a living character with a negative self support score. So the uh, twins went out and they were devoured by weasels after playing with the porcupine uh, hedgehog. So does that mean I come back to life? I think so. And all of my characters are dead. Oh, wow. So now we score. Yeah, you win. 
So now we're gonna take a look at Peasant Buffet made by Wargi Studios. This is a really cool game. It's great for a larger group of people. It says you can do it with two, but it's, it, it's not as fun with two people. Um, you're looking for four or up to, I think, six or eight different players. And basically, you're all peasants escaping monsters attacking your village. You're probably all going to die. Even if you die, you can still win the game. And you're trying to grab a bunch of loot on the way out. There's a couple of other cards that are in there, and there's some ways to fight monsters and boss monsters and get devoured. But you'll see that as we explain how to play. So setup for this game is very simple. First, separate out all the peasant cards, then shuffle the rest of the cards together and place them in the, the center of the table. This will be the village deck. Next, you choose your peasant at random. Each peasant has a special ability listed at the bottom of the card, and in the upper corner of the card, it shows you what kind of loot your character wants. This will be how we figure out scoring at the end of the game. So each turn, you draw cards. You must draw at least one you can stop at any time. If you choose to stop before a monster has appeared, you may put the cards that have been flipped over into your inventory. If you do draw a monster, your turn is over. If you already have the loot in your inventory to defeat the monster indicated on the card, you can place that loot on the monster, monster and discard all of that. Any loot on the table is then yours, and you can add it to your inventory in front of you. But if you can't defeat the monster, you lose any loot on the table. So item cards are in green. The yellow cards are the event cards. These happen immediately and then are discarded. Uh, they'll tell you what happens by just reading the text on the card. The red cards are doom cards, and these do go into your inventory. You can play them on yourself or on others, and they can only pl be played from your inventory, but they can be played at any time. When you have five monsters in your inventory, you are devoured. You cannot draw any more cards, but you do get to score at the end of the game. There are two kinds of monsters, just regular monsters and boss monsters. Boss monsters do not go into your inventory. Instead, they stay in the center of the table and they count towards everyone's monster total. Players can team up to contribute items to defeat a boss monster. And the game ends when one of three things happen. If you run out of cards, if all peasants have been devoured, or if the last living peasant completes a final turn. Once the game ends, you score points for each item in your inventory that matches your character's wants. You also score an additional point for surviving, and then score points for uh, character abilities or if you have any special cards. And that's it. That's Peasant Buffet. It's a fun, quick, silly game. <laughs>
love it. Gloom and Peasant Buffet. If you've played either of these games, let us know what you think about them down below. Hey, if you want to help us choose which games to play, then check out Bearded Bird on their social media, especially Facebook and things like that. They put polls up voting on the different games, and you could decide what it is that we'll teach you in a future episode. All right, thanks everybody for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We make videos here every Tuesday and Thursday, but you can hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss anything. All right, and we'll see you next time on Roll for Initiative. Bye. Bye.